Hey everyone, Vito from More Beer here. We're in Livermore, California, outside Shadow Puppet Brewing, owned by a friend of mine, Craig. But inside right now, they're doing the tasting exam for beer judge certification. I've been a beer judge for many years now. I think it was one of the things that got me to make better beer. I think it'll help you make better beer. Becoming a beer judge is awesome. So we're gonna go in and talk to Brian Cooper, who is proctoring the exam right now, and talk about how to become a beer judge. What is the BJCP? If you're interested in becoming a beer judge, this is the episode for you. So let's go in inside and check it out. Hi, Brian. Hey, thanks for taking the time to sit with us and talk about beer judging. So I just want to introduce you. So you're a Grand Master Level 1 BJCB judge. Yes, sir. Uh, you're also the host of the Dr. Homebrew Podcast, or one of the hosts. co host The co-host, yeah. co sorry. The founder of the Matt Zymergist Homebrew Club. Matt Zymergist, local club here in, yeah. in uh, Liver Livermore, Pleasanton, Dublin area. And then... Area, Cali's Bay Area of California also the West Coast representative of the BJCP, which is the Beer Judge Certification Program. Yeah. So thanks again for sitting with us. Uh, what are some of the benefits of becoming a beer judge? Because you know, for me, you know, I, I was like, well, this is something I wanna do because of Lee, and you know, he, he said there's always a shortage of judges. Um, but some of the benefits, some of the ones that come to mind is like, I feel like I became a better brewer once I learned the judging side of things because I learned, you know, that. Also, the other cool thing, um, but I like to hear from you too, is like I get emails now, like come judge this down in, you know, this other state, you know. So like being asked to judge places is kind of cool. So, but what are some of the benefits of becoming a beer judge? Yeah, um, you know, absolutely. First and foremost, I think was just the educational aspect of, you know, I was had been brewing for a little while and my my beers had a certain level of, you know. I'd won a few awards, but I wanted to learn how to dial some things in a little better. And you can definitely improve your own brewing and help friends improve, you know, their brewing by picking up on different things. Like, oh, that's what that is. Okay, that's what acid aldehyde. To me, it tastes like pumpkin skins in the beer. Mm. You, you know, smell that pumpkin skin-like thing. Others get it as a green apple. And there are people that are blind to things like diacetyl, they can't get it in their beer, but another judge will smell it and help them out. Like, oh, okay, you need to do a diacetyl rest to get that out of your beer. And you can help your friends, you can make your own beer better. That's that's a really uh, cool part of it. But yeah, being invited to uh, competitions to judge, you know, some competitions really take care of their judges and, and you know, feed them a, a nice meal. Get your hotel room, all Sometimes that. Sometimes yeah. hotel rooms. Yeah. I get invited to these ones down in Mexico. I'd like to sometime actually do the uh, Copa Baja, I think it is. And when you pass the exam, that's just the beginning. You've got your certification, you've, you've demonstrated that you can judge and taste and smell and, and describe and give feedback on beer to a level that is you know, commendable. You've, you've earned the certification. From there, the education begins and you work with other judges. Like, you know, you, you keep talking about Lee and I work mm -hmm. with Lee and other people back in the day when I was first starting to judge. And it's a very welcoming uh, community. And uh, you go into a competition as a novice and a, you just earn your certification. You're like, oh, I don't feel qualified. Like, but a lot of times the higher level judges, the others that you're working with, they just want to talk about beer intelligently like you do. It's a collaborative process. It's an educational process all the way through. And I'm still learning from lower level judges, higher level judges all the time. It's just a part of the fun of learning more about craft beer and home brewing. I'm really glad you said the community. Cause yeah, like we talk about like, oh, it's cool that you're gonna make better beer. You're gonna you know, be invited to these things. But at the end of the day, the thing that has brought me in, just homebrewing in general, is the community, yeah. right? Like meeting right. people like you, like Lee, like and, and judging is the same thing. The clubs, yeah, yeah, the community. I think that's really what makes what we're doing so amazing is there's just an amazing community, you know, and we're all from different walks of life, etc. Uh, and we get together and come together over this common uh, love for beer. Um, so you know, it is the, the community, the judging community, the brewing community, all amazing. Uh, and that's it's just it. that's so what it's all yeah, about. That's what yeah. it's all about. Yeah, I judged uh, nationals last year, and I sit down, and then Gordon Strong's right. I'm at the <laughs> table with yeah. him judging, and it was like, oh my god, we're not worthy, we're not worthy, uh, kind of yeah. moment, you know. But he was totally great guy. Didn't brow beat chair. No, anything, not right? at all. Like, yeah, like, even beer. the people that are way up at the top, you know, yeah. they're loving and welcoming, and uh, it's just a great community. So. Go into 
beer judging. So let's start with telling all, everyone, you know, what is the BJCP? The Beer Judge Certification Program is just that. It's an organization that certifies judges. Um, they have an exam program. They also help to sanction competitions. So if you want to register a competition and have it have some gravity of this is a BJCP sanctioned uh, event, contact them, go through the, the process, fill out the info and get your competition registered. And then you have a sanctioned comp. So all the big comps are sanctioned and they put the schedule together so judges know when and where all that stuff is. It's uh, founded in 1985 and uh, the judge program has expanded worldwide. It started out being more you know, in the States and built up a you know, critical mass of judges here, but then other regions wanted to come in. And uh, there's a lot of judges in Latin America, you know, in Asia, Middle East and Europe and just all over the place. So we've had to add regions and representatives for those areas and it's continuing to grow. So uh, beer judge certification program, BJCB, but it is worth mentioning and I know some of my friends out there that are mead and cider judges would be uh, mad if I didn't mention this, but there is also a mead and cider program as well, right? Absolutely. I, I just earned my mead certification last year and uh, yeah, uh, an exam that my friend Herendu gave. Oh, Herendu, yeah. Yeah, yeah and uh, from Doe's. And uh, yeah, we, we uh, had a, you know, a dozen people there become beer judges, or, sorry, mead judges. And some of them, one of them is actually here today. We gave an exam today. Well, a few people from that mead exam were here too, including one of our proctors. But, uh, you know, got a guy that's just, just getting his beer certification now too. He started with mead. And you can go any direction, that, you know. Uh, well, yeah, shout out to uh, Harindu, Pavel, uh, all our meat yeah. insider people. But today yeah, we're yeah. talking beer, so let's keep uh, digging into Absolutely. that. Absolutely. All right, so next one, uh, the, the style guidelines. Uh, what are mm -hmm. the BJCP style guidelines? Um, just kind of explain that to me, um, you know, what, 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 and, and everybody else out there, what are the BJCP style guidelines? So, yeah, it's a, it's a framework of style descriptions that can be used in a competition to define the beer styles that you're accepting in that competition and give the judges a reference to go to as they're looking what that, that should be expected in that beer. And um, you know they've been put together by uh, mainly Gordon Strong from the BGCP uh, with uh, Chris England and some other people that have contributed. You can look at the notes about who, you know, in the introduction, kind of explaining what it does encompass and what it isn't. It's not meant to be the be all end all for everything. And you know some styles have more of a range than others and they're working to standardize the language for, for each of the styles and just present it in a you know, fairly uh, straightforward way about how to understand a style, including the aroma, the appearance, what the beer should look like, how the, you know, how the head retention is, the color, the, the texture of the head, and uh, color of the foam, everything uh, to the, the flavor, getting into the beef of things, and uh, you know, malt, hops, how the fermentation characteristics are playing in the beer, the balance of it, fi finish and aftertaste, and other things, you know, the bitterness level, everything just comes into play, how that beer uh, balances out and what, you know, what attributes are expected in a certain style. Then also the mouthfeel, which is just how the, the beer feels in your mouth, literally. Does it feel like syrup or yeah. water or, you know, and, yeah. and does it have any stringency, like a biting sensation, any creaminess, like a smooth, creamy quality? You know, things like that. What, where's the carbonation at? You feel that too, a little carbonic bite in certain beers. There's a little history in them in the guidelines too. Uh, but you can always dig deeper into that. There's a little blurb about each each beer history and, and what it kind of, you know, style comparisons as well, showing what it, you know, what it might be similar commercial to. Commercial examples could be as well. For, and then you get, yeah, the classic commercial examples. And I remember when I was studying for the exam, uh, you know, trying to get some of these yeah. classic examples. And yeah, sometimes, you know, I didn't travel to Belgium or Germany, no. so I had to get them and, and taste them. But but the guidelines are great. You know, they tell you, like you said, the aroma, you know, the the, the, the color, the flavor, what I'm looking for. And yeah. kind of, it's just a shared reference point for all of us to, uh, but I think it's worth noting, and, and in my time judging, and I'm sure in your time judging too, uh, they change over time. So like, like Dortmunder's no longer part of the, you know, it's changed and like yeah. hazy ipa has been added to the style guidelines so so uh you know i think really one wasn't. of the the most we saw the change in and, and and rightfully so was the ipa category right yeah yeah you had uh different you know uh red ipa you know brown they ipa expanded. they expanded <laughs> that and, and you know because the ipa is such a broad range you know so yeah and they've yeah i mean the hazy ipa edition that, that probably came a little late but you know it, it was getting very popular 
right you, after the prior. Uh, you kind of have to make sure it's going to stick around before you add uh, it, right? We yeah. know was it going to be a, a flash in the pan like the Brute IPA, but it, you yeah. know there's still a, a guideline for for Brute IPA out there, and you know somebody took the time to write that. If it came back and was more popularized. Then I'm, you could, you'd have a reference to judge it. I'm by. drinking a cold IPA right now. Yeah, you know, will that be added? Uh, uh, optimal results. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's uh, that very well may be Which, added. As you know, I think some of the nods. Uh, speaking of brute, you know, like I think cold IPA kind of took from a, you know dry, you know, the lighter, you know, like yeah. the, you know some similarities there. So yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Before yeah. we would have the specialty category, right? That's where like right. a lot of these would fall into, and you'd be judging, and you're like, "Hey, I'm getting an IPA. I'm getting this like you know crazy stout, you know." So it's like it is nice to to expand those guidelines, right? Over time, and yeah. so then you're not just you know how do you judge these beers against each other, you know? And occasionally things will you know it, a historical style will get revived. A Kentucky Common, they they brew in here, you know, it's pretty pretty decent beer, but you know some of the styles that will, will become more popular and and become uh, you know, a part of the the main style guidelines, but then there's a section for historical styles where, if you want to go, you know, brew a Greek prohibition lager or something, you can you can brew that. Look what the guidelines are supposed to be for that. What do those beers taste like? You know, back before prohibition started, and you know, where do they come from? There's history for those things too, which is interesting to read up on. And you know, sometimes styles. Come in like right now. Um, I hear a lot about Gretzkys and oh, you know, in the people, people Gretzkys, yeah, Gretzkys, yeah, yeah. people yeah. Gretzky. It's yeah. getting really popular in the Northwest, and that I mean, there's styles that have pretty much died out that that people are tasting again and realizing, wow, this is actually a nice balance for this beer, and it works in another region and you know pops up and gets more popular. So that's yeah, the awesome thing about I mean, home brewing and, and brewing in general, right? Like there's. There's always stuff to learn, but then it's also evolving over time, so that's just really cool. Yeah, um, absolutely. Real quick, uh, and I don't know the answer, but I'm hoping you do off the top. So is there is there 36 styles? How many styles is there within the, the guidelines? I think it's 36, it's, and then there's... Uh, there's 34, 34 is specialty okay. beer. And then, and, then, and then there's subs of those, so it really yeah. blows out to what, like 90 or something? There's like three or four in each, you know, each category. So yeah, there's there's, you know, over... Hundred something. Um, I don't know the exact number, but yeah, yeah. There's there's quite a few quite a few beers defined here. Um, but so there's you, a beer style you know, out there for everyone, pretty much. Right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you can also you don't have to go just by the BJCP. If you get the the beer style guidelines app, it also has the ones that are used in the you know the, the BA like you know their competitions. Uh, you know, like the Great American Beer Fest has their own guidelines, and the BJCP is open to that. We can uh, you know. We can sanction a competition, but not necessarily make you judge by our guidelines. You can define as many and as broad a styles as you want and have 30 different versions of IPA or whatever your, if it's a commercial competition, you know, to spread that stuff out and, and make it, uh, you know, work for them and, uh, you know, define styles that are popular right now. We were looking, we were doing a show on Dr. Homebrew about Mexican lagers, mm. and it just falls under like, you know, uh, Pale uh, international, you know, international lager, pale yeah. lagers, yeah. but really, I think eventually that you know it's been a style for a while. If you yeah. think about it, and maybe the next time guidelines come out, there'll be a Mexican lager. We don't yeah. know. Um, tell me about the scoring. So it's a fifty-point scale. Yeah, it's a fifty-point scale, and um, there's ranges right on the score sheet. There's there's world-class beers, and uh, you know, and then there's excellent and very good, good, you know, and fair. <laughs> Uh, where the beer needs some improvement down in the uh, in the teens, like a you know, if you get to a beer that's like a thirty eight to to forty four, that's in the excellent range. That's gonna move on, yeah. <laughs> forty five and above is like world class. That's gonna be you know probably one of the best examples of a given style that you've tasted in your life tasting beer. Say I give a beer a twenty eight, or and you give a beer a forty three. Uh, right. What happens after that? I think it's inter it's worth talking about that. Yeah, if you're judging together in a competition, sometimes you have a judge pair or a judge trio, and one of the guys just disagrees. as like, you know, I, I scored this a 40. It's uh, it's really good to me. And then the two found something in it where uh, it was a little more objectionable to them. A lot of times when you're tasting together, you and I can sit down and talk about a beer. It's like, oh, maybe I was a little I'll come too up, you go down on that. Yeah, yeah. But you don't necessarily need to. If like you stick to your guns, like no, this was. I thought there was really a rule. Is, is it a rule of like you need to be within seven? I, I, within five to seven points is where you want to be, and then you'll give a consensus score for the beer, where the judges say, okay, well, this you know, regardless, this guy scored it 
a 30, these other two gave it a 37, your consensus score might be a 35 or a 36, and you just decide, let's decide on that. We're okay, we're adults here, this is what this beer deserves, okay. <laughs> but it doesn't need to be a, you know, a, a, a punching match or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've, I, I've been at some tables where it does feel like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it gets a little intense. Yeah, We're talking yeah. about beer here. It's an important thing. Yes, definitely. I totally agree. All right, so we know what the BGCP is. We know what the style guidelines are. Walk me through becoming a beer judge. Uh, today you were proctoring part of becoming a beer judge, but let's talk through, you know, if someone out there who wants to become a beer judge, let's tell them how to do that and, and the steps that it, uh, we'd walk through to do that. I, I started just, I wanted to become a beer judge. I thought about it and it's like, okay. And I tried doing it all on my own and I, I kind of went out and I would, you know, had at the time printed copies of the guidelines and I would bring them out and, you know, as I was tasting beers, kind of, try to get at some of the different flavor and aroma attributes that is, you know, are being called out in those guidelines and learn how to taste beer. David Tekken, one of our proctors today, uh, he's my judging mentor and helped me out when I started. I was talking to him at, at uh, Northern California Homebrews Festival one year, like in 07. And I was like, what, what do I do if I wanna, you know, our club was just starting out that year and we got a little booth there. And I'm like, what do I do if I wanna become a beer judge? And uh, you know he was already like ma a master or grandmaster level at the time. And he grabs a syllabus from his beer judging course that he was running at the time, and he's like, "Here, you can do this, and I'll come help you. I'll teach a class or two, give you this syllabus. You can make your own set of classes." So we just enlisted all these different, um, you know, people from different homebrew clubs around the area. Lee Shepard. That's the reason. That was my Sheen, mentor. Yeah, yeah. Some of these guys that, that had been doing it for a while and were presidents of the clubs back then. Yeah, Miss Lee a lot. Um, you know, and they came in and helped educate us and gave us our start. David did the intro class uh, towards the end of 2007, and we had a group of, you know, a good dozen people that were interested in it as well. So the exam at that point, I think, was different. In 2015 yeah. is, is kind of where it's at now, right, is when it changed? Uh, it changed in 2012 was when or 2012. the, the okay. biggest change came, when it went from being a full three-hour exam that you take the first time and write essay questions and beers are coming out as you're doing that. And there were, you know, true-false questions at the start. The legacy exam was, you know, a, a exercise in just writing and writing and writing and writing. So today, um, now you take a online entrance exam first, yeah. right? That's the yeah. first step. Um, and it's a timed exam, right? If I recall correctly, you got like an hour to take that. So you really can't be looking in a book. You kind of got to yeah, you know, yeah. take that. It's about 20 seconds a question. There's like 200 questions and you just go through. And if you don't, it's really hard to try to sit and look everything up. You know, if you don't know. So you got to do some homework. Styles, yeah. internalize a lot of that. You, and you can't answer the questions quickly. There's also some... It's not just styles, too. It's, it's like brewing processes, right? And, right. Uh, the yeah. procedures of judging, yeah. different, um, where different off flavors come from, mm -hmm. uh, what's appropriate in a certain beer. And a lot of times the questions are very tricky because it's multiple choice, multiple answer. And you have to choose the two, or is it three, or how many things are right in this, or none of the above, or all of the above. Uh, so, you know, you have to be really careful on some of the questions. And a lot of people that just go in and take it out of the blue, you know, they won't pass the first time. Uh, a lot of times homebrewers have a little advantage over, you know, the common public, even well-educated craft brew aficionados may do okay. They might pass it, but it, once you get some of that brewing knowledge and, and understand what these guys are doing to make the beer mm -hmm. and gals, uh, you know, taste and balance the way it is and the procedures that you need and the ingredients that you need to make a good example of a certain style, you're not going to do well on the exam. So it goes without saying, you want to study, right? You got to do that. Then you, yeah. you take the online exam. <clears throat> I think it's you know twenty bucks or thirty bucks. It's not too expensive, right? Or it's, it's ten bucks. Ten or you bucks. Get okay. Three for twenty, and okay. you know, just have three chances to pass it. So once you pass that, you're not recognized at that point, right? No, you're it's just a, a provisional. A judge. provisional judge. So now you have the ability to take what we did today, which right. is the, the yeah. written exam, right? So yeah. and you have a year, I think. You get a year, a year? time frame to okay. go and take your in-person, you know, judging exam, which I administer today. 
and boy, it's, you know. And there's only, you kind of got to look around, because I remember, like, when I passed the, the online portion, and I was like, oh, okay, there's one coming up in San Francisco a couple months from now. Right. So it's like, in your region, you got to find the one, and there's not a ton of them going on, right? You may have to expect to plan to travel a little bit for, for some of the exams, Beer vacation, not a bad idea. Yeah, if you're in a little more of a remote area, you know, find something that's close to you, contact the exam administrator as far in advance as possible, and just make sure that they've got you in for their exams, usually first come, first served. So let's talk about that. So I've passed the, the online exam, yeah. I've got my certificate, I'm ready to, uh, to sign up for, for the exam that, that, we, or that you administered today. Um, talk me through, okay, um, what is the next, so I take today's test, uh, you know, what, yeah. what, what does that entail? To become a judge, you need to hit a 60% score on the, the judging exam. You're graded on your uh, perceptions, your descriptive ability, uh, the feedback that you give to the brewer, and your completeness on the sheet, just the way how f completely you comment on every aspect of the beer. If you forget to comment on the hops, even in a multi beer, even if it's n there's no hops that detectable in the nose, you need to do that. And then uh, that's a great another, tip. It's like yeah. be verbose, right? Like, yeah, you want to fill out. That was a t what I was told is like make sure you fill out each section. Yeah, right. Fill them out completely. Yeah. yeah, completeness is a big part. That's twenty percent of the score. And uh, then then a part of it is there are three proctors that judge the beers along with you. The same beers that the administrator presents, and they rate the beers even longer score sheets than the examinee version with a lot of detail. And that's passed to the graders along with your exam. And the, the grader will look at each exam, see what how well the examinee did on this and that. Uh, but their score, their scoring accuracy is, is calculated by how closely they're aligned with the proctors on the exam. So the and proctors that's sent scored off. a 20 and they scored a 40, you're not gonna, yeah, you know, it'll be like failing. And that's sent off to BJCB headquarters or to some, like I remember when right. I took it, they, went to another state and then I had to wait like two or three months before I got my results back, right? Yeah, that... uh, these days all the score sheets get scanned uh, and they're sent in to uh, you know uh, the, the uh, exam director and from there they feed them to graders that they've chosen for a certain exam. And um, you know the, the graders, they're volunteer, it's all volunteer work and um, they're, they're doing a lot of uh, service for the program and the people in the exam program, I respect them a lot. So I take the test, uh, you know, I score a seven, 70, mid 70s. Um, now I need points in order to become certified, correct? Right, you gotta okay. get the five points. How do I get those um, points? So you, you can uh, get points from stewarding the competition, which is a way I'd recommend to a lot of people getting their first experience in a, in a competition environment. And they help bring out the beers to the judges. Uh, you know, they collect their sheets, check their math, give the sheet back to the judge that needs, you know, uh, to correct something. And, you know, make sure they're supplied with crackers and water and that stuff. And you don't treat them like the hired help. There's, they're really good stewards in the program that, that just are, just love stewarding and, and maybe don't want to become a judge. Uh, and they do a fine job at that. There are others that a lot of times at the end of a judging, a stu steward is able to taste that beer after the judges have gone through, done their full process, reconciled, hit their consensus score, and a lot of times they're just, here, taste this. It's got a, you know, it's a pretty good example of the style, but it's got a light little bit of fruitiness in it that it shouldn't have in a lager, and we scored it down in the mid-30s or whatever it was. I did a lot of stewarding before I took the yeah. exam, which was great, and I, I recommend that for anybody out there. Um, I was more into competition brewing, so I was kind of just like looking, you know, trying to look behind the curtain and see how yeah. it, it worked. What's going on here? Um, but the good thing is, it allowed me to build up a lot of points. So then, when I took the test, I, you know, became Already. certified right away. Yeah, yeah. you need yeah, the, so. like half of them to be f from judging. So, yeah, I think I did have to like judge an exam. Or you know what? I think I judged some some uh, competitions before that because you can judge uh, without being a certified judge. They're just going to yeah. rank you up or, or put you up with someone who's higher ranked, right? Right. Yeah, they'll yeah. they'll accept novice judges in in some competitions. Um, you know, not at the national level. You know, an NHC is is looking for you know at least certified or you know national master, uh, but. Yeah, you can judge as a, a novice, and usually you'll be paired with two other BJCP judges or one other BJCP judge, and it's a part of your education there too. And you don't have to just, you know, kowtow to the judge. You can, if you're an experienced taster, a brewer, you know what you're doing just to a great extent. You can talk about the beer intelligently, 
you know, you knew what you were doing before you got that certification. Yeah, I think as a commercial brewer, you could judge uh, yeah. just that's a, a checkbox on yeah, there. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love now I could do commercial brewer plus yeah. certified plus the. Yeah, we're going uh, through yeah. uh, you know tasting courses and and sensory evaluation. Yeah. It, just doing that, yeah. Yeah, and that's part of what we did with our exam group too. Is we got the Zebel kit, which has twelve mm. different doses, and you spike a uh, Coors Light or whatever light lager you want with those to taste, oh, okay, this is what isothaleric acid tastes like, you know, the, the, the cheesy yeah. aspect of the hops. And this is, Cetobacter, so, you know, diacetyl, DMS, exactly. yeah. I know, acid aldehyde, di diacetyl, yeah, all those fun ones. So, okay, I need a certain amount of points, and it's five, is it five? Five for To certified. become certified. Yeah. Uh, if I score above a 70, um, now if I want to become a national judge, how many points and score do I need to do that? Right, so that's hitting another level where, let's say you, you you know, you hit that 70 the first time you took the exam, you retake it and hit that 80 plus. Then you qualify to take the written uh, examination. So, uh, and on that, it's, you know, five essay questions in 90 minutes. You get to take, uh, there are no beers presented on that one. You've taken your tasting exam, your tasting score becomes half of what your, uh, your average score will be to hit a certain level. So, you know, if you hit an 82, on uh, the, the tasting and you get a 78 on uh, the written exam, it averages to an 80, you're national. Mm. With a certain number of points, you need you know, 20. Uh, 20? I believe it's 20. <laughs> it's yeah, been a while since I've had to look at that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm over 200 points now. <laughs> but wow. I'm, I'm going for Grandmaster 2. I'll, I'll be there soon. With the, I've been judging as much as I can and I've graded over the years too, so that counts towards the there's a thing called the Grand Master Service Requirement above that Oh yeah, as well. don't you have to do a certain, like proctoring this exam, that's yeah. like giving back to the community, right? That's part of, right. of yeah. the, that process. Since it is all volunteer, you're you know adding service to the organization as a requirement for, for getting certain kinds of points. So yeah, let's say you hit national at, at 80 plus or master at, at 90 plus and then get the you know 40, uh, 40 points for that, I believe it is, and then <laughs> I should know all this stuff, right? That's okay. Um, but yeah, additional levels of master, once you hit 90 and get the points for that, you're master, and then to proceed to grand master, you need uh, grand master service requirement, which is, um, I believe, 200, 240 points of GMSR service, which is from things like grading, giving exams, proctoring exams, and you know, uh, doing educational stuff. Sometimes you you know you can earn points for giving service back to the organization and helping other judges up, which I've always enjoyed doing from the beginning too. Like instead of going to a course, we just planned our own course with Dave Teckham's guidance mm -hmm. and made our own course and brought in whoever we could to help us do it. And I I liked learning you know by teaching and just mm -hmm. kind of doing and being a part of it and, and, and having taught homebrew classes and stuff like that, I think it is a great way for you to learn as well, right? Like you're, you're, you're Check learning. Your knowledge. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's a great, so yeah, I totally recommend that. Um, yeah. and, and just talking about the leveling up, I think to, you know, I, I don't want to say this, but a lot of homebrewers might be gamers too. I'm a gamer. So it kind of appeals to the like gamer level and you know, level up. Yeah. Right. It's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. So I, I enjoy that side of things too, of like leveling up and, yeah. you know, and just getting your little pins and things like that. You know, it's kind of cool. It's fun. Well, Brian, hey, thank you for taking time to do this. Uh, yeah. Like we said, amazing community. Appreciate yeah, you. Thanks to you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, you guys are doing good work. I like uh, the video series is fun and hopefully this will, uh, encourage some people that are thinking about judging. Maybe talk about taking that next step. Work, you know. Where uh, this is a great point. Where where would they go to if they want to take that next step? Well, the the exam schedule is on bjcp.org. You can go out, go there and, and seek out an exam. Uh, and the exam administrator could possibly give you some resources. But I think the best place to start out is in your local homebrew club. If you're not in one yet, or you don't want to be in one. It's okay. You can reach out to these people. And a lot of times they'll be the ones running educational courses that'll get you that. And the AHA foundation. has a list of local homebrew clubs. So you could actually look yeah. at your state, see where you're at, see if there's a local homebrew club, and they're gonna be your probably your best resource, I agree. Right. Yeah. Just and you know, talk to you know local beer knowledgeable people and uh, you know, brewers that you might know, and they might be able to help steer you in a certain direction and, and give you some resources as well. You can like I said, you can do the self study thing and uh, people you know, go through it and I think there's some online and, uh, and, test exams and things like that. I yeah. remember doing some of those um, initially. Yeah, you can yeah. you can do the, the practice exam. That's a good place to start if you're thinking about it. 
it'll give you an idea for how you know difficult and detail oriented the the entrance exam really is it's like 20 questions and you just go through it if you do well on that then you're probably at a good baseline where you, you know might be able to go for it do a little additional study get hooked up with an exam uh, study group or an administrator that's going to feed you some materials to work on your own and and get you there but uh, you know it's a journey and you don't have to start out with the grandest aspirations a lot of people are just happy to get that recognized or certified and go out and take part in competitions and have some fun and if you work at it it's not too hard to get there that's what you know Dave Tuckham has a real can-do attitude when he handed me his syllabus he's like you can do this this is it's really not that hard he helped to demystify it for me and I hope you know I've helped to to do that for some people out there as well and uh, you know just enjoy the process you don't have to rush towards it but you can work towards becoming a beer judge and a lot of you probably already are beer judges. You just don't know it yet. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Lee told me. Yeah. He's like, dude, you, you've got this. You've got the yeah. knowledge. So yeah. every journey starts with one step. So take that step. Go to you know, BJCB.org. Seek out your local homebrew club. Thanks, Brian, for going over this today. Uh, thank you guys for watching this. Hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, tell us how you liked it in the comments. Let us know if you're a beer judge. If you want to become a beer judge, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask us. Uh, I'll answer them. Maybe I'll get Brian to jump on there and answer some of those questions too. But thank you for watching and uh, see you at the judging table.